2017's It has been scaring audiences everywhere since its release. But for all the terror Pennywise is causing on the big screen, the novel contains even more horrifying scenes that had to be cut from the film. Here are the scariest moments from It that were too terrifying to leave the book. Ben's First Encounter Early in the novel, Ben Hanscom is shown volunteering to stay late to help his teacher finish some last-minute tasks. And by the time they're done, the streets have cleared. Even though it's brutally cold, Ben decides to walk home alone. Along the way, he spots a clown standing on the ice, clutching balloons and offering Ben one, with his usual offer for the kid to float. What's frightening about it is that Ben does want that balloon and feels sucked into Pennywise's mental grip, which is only broken by the town's clock chiming to indicate the top of the hour. Talk about being saved by the bell. <laughs> the Werewolf the It movie did a great job of sneaking in a lot of the pop-culture-inspired monsters that loom large over the losers, but the werewolf at the Kneebolt Street House only appeared in a blink and you'd miss it moment. As in the movie, the werewolf arrives during Bill and Richie's journey into the house, but while Richie's perspective shows It as the four-legged freak show, Bill sees something different. As they escape on Bill's bike silver, he describes It as a clown in a varsity coat, which runs counter to Richie's memory of the monster. It's a subtle difference, but the scene proves that It looks different to different people, depending on their particular fear, which makes it that much scarier than some bozo with big teeth. The absence of the wolf also means that the book's weapon, Silver Slugs, aren't a factor in the movie, which is why the losers end up fighting with a bolt gun instead of their trusty slingshot. The Standpipe Although Stan's first encounter with It in the movie takes place in his father's office, the literary version is a lot creepier. As a child, Stan is an avid bird watcher and heads down to the Barrens to do some spotting near the Standpipe, a notoriously off-limits part of town since it claimed too many lives when it was open to the public. After seeing the standpipe appear to float, Stanley goes inside. The door shuts, locking him in, and he hears a voice claiming to be the dead ones. He only manages to escape by chanting the names of birds from his guidebook. Despite what he's seen, Stan still has trouble wrapping his head around what's happened and needs more proof of its existence. This all goes to show, of course, that Stan has more trouble accepting it than the rest, which will have deadly consequences for him later in life. Georgie's Picture in the It movie, the kid's projector slideshow develops a mind of its own and slowly churns out a more than photorealistic image of Pennywise. That might be a clever way of getting the feel of the scene across while embracing the movie's adjusted timeline, but there's still something particularly sinister about the way this moment goes down in the book. As reimagined by the TV miniseries as well, Bill looks at a photo album with some innocent family pictures of Georgie, but one photo of his lost little brother starts to move, winking at him and promising that he'll see him soon, just before the book starts gushing blood. Making matters worse is that image represents Bill's freshest memory of Georgie, since it was taken just days before his death. Sure, the It movie brought Georgie back to terrorize Bill, but the scene as written is a spine tingler all on its own. The Disappearance of Chad Lowe other than Betty Ripsom and Patrick Hochstetter, the children who've gone missing in the 2017 movie are largely ignored, which means the movie also passes over one of the most disturbing disappearances of all, Chad Lowe. Grown-up Mike Hanlon makes mention of the boy later when recapping the town's attitude towards the missing kids, pointing out Chad's case to the cop, who wants to wave away the deaths or disappearances as coincidence. Lowe was just three and a half when he went missing the same year the losers made their first stand against it. Granted, Pennywise has never seemed to care about the ages of his victims. After all, Georgie's just six when he snatched away on the street. The little Chad is still just a toddler, which makes his probable death even more gruesome. It's a footnote to the whole story of it, but an especially unsettling one. Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.